We're live! Uh, <laughs> today is the 18th of uh, September, a Tuesday, and um, we're here with Manta, Sam, and Matt. Um, and yep, uh, yesterday I did some preparing for for the speech I'm going to give um, on on Friday um, at the conf, and I also joined the Bed Assassins, um uh, meeting and talked with them, catch, caught up with them, and listened to them. Um, they're having some struggles with um, getting the, the the newest version of the book from Amazon and customer support from them, and also same with um, Codio and, and customer sort of, um, service from them. So um, just something we ran into last week with uh, with Microsoft. So uh, that's a familiar block blocker. Um, and also joined the marketing meeting and um, met up with Alex yesterday, um, which was nice. And Stella um, joined us at the end as well uh, and had just a, a quick um, check in with each other on, on some ideas and, and what we've been up to and the, um, to, to help promote our Agile Ventures so that more people can find out about it. Um, I, I did notice there's a couple of um, new members that joined yesterday that I was trying to respond to. Um, and yeah, that was that was my day yesterday. I was I was just telling Sam that I was, I'm I'm really um, interested in getting into some coding stuff. Um, yeah, I uh, there's that maybe you know, I don't know if there's time in the after scrum or when when there would be, but um, it would be nice to have a look at that um, website one um, small fire um, PR that I put in about um, changing relative paths in the um, GitHub readmes into absolute ones. Um, and today we have lots of amazing stuff coming up, do we? I think we have the Rails 5 TDD mob coming up um, in about an hour, an hour, hour and a half. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but we have the, the local support kickoff in retro later today um, at, at the 315 UTC, um, where I guess I'll, I'll, I'll throw it over to Sam and see potentially we're going to um, prepare some start start talking about getting prepared for next week for the the sprint so yeah and no no blockers no active blockers um, but I will try to find one for for a different scrum Sam thanks Matt um, yes so well we had a we had an intense week sprinting on the NHS project last week lots of blockers but some progress. Um, yeah, I've got some updates about that that I'll mention at the end. Uh, yesterday, I was actually at the NHS headquarters meeting with the top folks who generally seem quite relaxed and happy and so on. So it's all under control there. I've got a list of action items from that that I should probably review. We'll have the NHS wiki meeting tomorrow, so I, I guess we can we can kind of I guess we can kind of leave some of the details uh, for that um, then. Uh, what I imagine a wonderful present, you know, trial run presentation by Matt yesterday evening in the uh, AV community talk. Um, and then this morning, I've been uh, on the London Ruby users group list chatting about VCR cache files. Um, and that's sort of related to, to the book I'm working on called Emotional Open Source. And then I spent just an hour working with WooCommerce WordPress integration for private clients. Um, and yeah, now. Yeah, looking forward to local support planning the next uh, meeting there. I guess just before I forget that, what, what were the updates we had from? Yeah, no updates from Microsoft. This is for the NHS project. We had an update from Bitnami saying about we could get like a group subscription, um, and that would maybe unlock us. I guess that is the update. And then I've just got all these action items related, which are related to sort of the content in the site from the client. Um, do I have? Any blockers? No, just partly because I was out yesterday. I would like in the after scrum just to review some of the the meeting, just check through the meetings that Matt you ran yesterday, and just check that we've dealt with any blockers that are happening happening there. Um, yeah, and I did also manage to. I think I've almost finished the like wrapped up that anti power Society project with their access database. Hopefully, that will be put to bed, and they will pay us the remainder of the money, and that will be all done. So, woohoo! Cool, awesome. Um, yeah, I guess I have some questions about that, um, but um, I'll try to find an appropriate time to, yeah. 
uh, uh, which is the after scrum because next yeah. it's it's uh, not not that Manta necessarily wants to, but we should create a space yeah. for Manta to do her uh, scrum, what she's been doing, what she's blocked on, what exactly. she might want to do in the future. Uh, I see, Manta, you're asking some questions about. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. I have started with this EDX course, uh, mm -hmm. and that's how I got this link for this one. And uh, that is how I have logged in here. Uh, so I'm not sure whether to continue with the course or is it going to be tough? Because uh, this pair programming I haven't used before. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I just want to understand a bit more, like um, how do you get started and uh, how do you go ahead with pair programming? I earlier know C++ and other languages, but I'm not familiar with Ruby on Rails. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn that. And uh, from the EDX course, I got this link and this is the first time I logged in. Yeah, cool. Welcome. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. That's you're in exactly the right place. And thank you so thank much for you. for joining us and, yeah. and sharing and be, be, being with us. And I think definitely we can we can answer your questions and and help you out. Yeah. That will be great. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think that's maybe should we is that that's time for us to go into the we after scrum. After scrum. So now we've finished our uh you know reports and so now we've got you know some license just to have general chat now. So um yeah, I guess so. Your your questions are, I guess you, you're hoping to learn more Ruby on Rails. You're wondering about continuing with the course and maybe to how to get started with pair programming. Is that right? Yes, yes. And so, yeah. how far how far through the course are you? How how many um what week of the course did you get to? Um, so I'm actually at the second week of the course. Yes. And um. Uh, the part that I have to do individually, that is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but the part uh, now, it's, it is mainly focusing on pair programming right. and online sessions. So that is mm. the part where I'm not sure whether I will find somebody who's at my level. Right, right. So, so you're, looking at a, you're looking for a pair partner to work yeah. on some of the assignments for, for the course. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, and that's so this is certainly the kind of place where we can we can help you find someone. Um, Matt, you've been involved in running weekend sessions where you've been working mm -hmm. on on those. Do you want to tell uh, yep. Manta a little bit about what you've been doing with helping people connect with each other? Yep. Um, Faith as well. Um, also is going through the course. Um, so I, I've finished the course, but I'm I'm going through kind of um, again. You know, um, many times to 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 just. Um, be there to have a space for people to be able to to meet with each other and and to help if I can and to learn from from other people as well refactor my code and we meet every weekend so um, we're on Tuesday so the weekend's a little a little far away but um and and this weekend I'm gonna be out of town but normally the 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 meetings are happening um, in my absence as well. So that's, um, I'm not sure what time zone you're joining us from, but okay. we're meeting at okay. 5 p.m. Uh, should I create a new event? You, you certainly can do that as well, yep. Um, and there's, there are people who on the channel, CS, um, C, uh, ESAS, um, what is it, ESAS? Yeah, should we just check? So, so Manta, are you in our Slack environment? I uh, yeah. you, don't know if you, have you ever seen this before? I don't remember. How do I no, get in? Yes, yeah, so, so so this is this is where we do a lot of our organization, and there are special channels for people to meet up. So um, you, obviously you you've been to the the course, um, which I'll just try and get to now. I think it's this one, uh, yeah. and so the course has its own uh, chat room, which is a Gitter chat. So that's also a good place. To say hello, then so I can get you the link for that, which is just yeah. here. So this is one chat room. Um, I just put the link in the thing there, but yeah, if you go to the course and you've got there, it's got the chat link at the top, and so you can see this is you know different students sort of chatting, and then also like you can see other people starting events and links to those events. So you could try and join them if that's if they're working on a homework that you're interested in. 
you could just yeah. join and start chatting and, and, and see. But also you can chat in here. Um, if, you, if you create an event from our site, which you're very welcome to do, so you can, obviously you need to sign up for Agile Ventures, but you can create a pair programming event for CS169 there. When you take it live, it will uh, post a link to it here so other people can potentially find you and join you. Um, and it also posts it, posts it into our, see we have this Slack community and this is a, okay. you know, a text chat environment. And the channel that, that Matt was just mentioning is this one here, ESAS MOOC right. 169. So you can see right. here the same ones and it says click to join. Those are the same events that we just saw here. And you can see other yeah. conversation here. Uh, people are asking questions about the course and I'm responding and so on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, great. Yeah, that's very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're, ver you're very welcome. Yeah, and so, <laughs> yeah, here I just uh, I have a desktop. I've downloaded the Slack client, but you can access it through a, a browser. And okay, yeah, I'll it, do that. I got yeah. it. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, and so you should get an invite to it if you're signed up for Agile Ventures. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, great. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to, very glad to be able to help. And, and feel free to drop in again if you have other questions or, you know, once you're in the chat rooms, you can ask there as well. So, yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Faith is here as well. Hey, Faith. Faith. Hello. How are you doing, Faith? You all right? But, yes. How are you? Yeah. Pretty, I mean, my, my legs are not working very well because I ran the half marathon on Sunday but for, for British Heart Foundation. But we raised, we raised like 150 pounds for, um, the British Heart Foundation, so I'm feeling pretty pleased about that. That's amazing. I, I, I ran it in less than two hours. That's my best time ever. So. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say 150,000 there for a second. I was like, oh, oh, I wish. <laughs> maybe, maybe next. Maybe next year. Maybe in 2020. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to going to build on it next year. Uh, Quick like, coming. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Stop. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah. yeah. So Mantis popped up. Yeah, Faith. Anything blocking you? Anything to report? Yeah, I'm working on an RFM task. It's we're trying to ensure that Robocop checks all files. Previously, it was only in the backend version, so I'm working on that task. And where am I blocked on? I haven't completed like looking for answers, but I'm trying to ensure that node modules are not checked. But they mm. are, but so I don't know what I'm doing wrong mm. because I've been trying to like set that up in the Robocop file, but I've not been able to achieve that. So that's my only blocker. Otherwise, that, I am that's fine. That's RFM. Sorry. Yes, RFM. Right. Yes. Sorry. Go. Go on. And yeah. And I was. I was just trying to like understand the blocker. There. So it's. I am trying to. Thing is. The Rubocop file was only checking specific files in, right. in the backend folder. So I want to transfer it to the root folder so that other files can be checked as well. OK. But at the moment, I'm not able to exclude the node modules in in one of the folders. OK. There's yeah. a, um, it seems like there's a, um, the, in .rubocop.yaml file, you can you can say which files to exclude, maybe? Yeah, so I have done that. But tried not, a couple of things, but I'm not. It's not, so, it's not working yeah. as advertised. Yes, so there's something that I'm not doing right that I haven't figured out yet. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Nice. Cool, cool. Yeah, well, so we're already in the after scrum, so maybe we can come to this, this blocker. I was just, um, some of the things you mentioned, Matt, the, so we've got a thing for the beta sources. I mean, the Amazon book, I think the action item there for me becomes, I just need to, to ping Armando. Yeah, right? it was like, yeah it's I she mean, talked to him and, um, but it was like kind of unsuccessful in, in getting a- You're saying that J Janet talked to Amazon, talked to Armando? Yeah, she talked to Armando and talked to Amazon. And he offered, I guess he offered her a way of getting her like the Kindle version of it. And she said that that wasn't 
really of interest to her. She, um, wants the phys- she wants a physical copy of the book. No, she wants, well, she said that PDF would be nice. Um, okay. Uh, what's I can thing? probably get her a PDF. Go on. Okay. Richard Richard said that he um, that he has a PDF of, her, of an older version, and she was like, oh, if I could get a PDF, that'd be great. So she's, right. bought, she's actually bought the, even though she has bought it before, so she yeah. to buy it. She bought it again just to see, like, uh, you know, if she and to get the upgrade. Get, and, she, and, and uh, the upgrade's not coming through. Yeah, I mean, Armando's basically said it's in the hands of Amazon, and Amazon are just, yeah. like, kind of going. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, potentially, I, I, I can I can fix them up by generating PDFs of the two. I, I think I will I will reach to uh, just check with Armando. Um, yeah. She, um, so, and she said with the Codio, she got the email from, for Philip, um, you know, the CEO. Um, yeah directly try to to get an answer from Cody, but she said that she only has like um today is her last like janet day is what she's calling okay. it like, where she can throw time at the at the situation and she's right. kind of resigned to maybe just using the virtual box that she's kind of gotten set okay. up can't, so can't get so this is in specifically we've got and it can't get access uh to free education accounts and uh no no one can get latest two point version, which is I think was it is it one point two point two or something? Yeah, I think so. That's okay. Okay. So I think what then? Oh, because we should be meeting. Like, uh, I guess what I should do, I should do is check with Codio um, about yeah, Friday fair. meeting, um, and I can like uh, you know ping them about Janet's free account as well at the same time. Um, the, the, it which, was that all go on, which I, I, I won't be able to attend. That's uh, okay. No problem. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I think I'll be at the scrum on Friday morning. I'll be in Sao Paulo, but the conference starts after the scrum. So I, I guess I'll be there, but then the rest of the day I'll be. No problem at all. Yeah. You're doing important work there. No worries. Um, great. So, but yeah, so was there any other, so that, that was the two blockers from the beta cells. Was there anything else? That we're worried about. Mm, there was that. There was that thing that there was just kind of an oversight on on my part um, about um, telling people that they need to specifically set up the um, the the environment to like Jay got in contact with me with the same thing he got in contact with you about the right. um, Sinatra thing. And there, I, there, I did pass the the command to the Beta Sassers group, but it's something that's not pinned and it's not. And we didn't revisit when 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 people were switching over. So you can't run like you know just the documentation that we have like is for is for um, Cloud Nine. And so right, right. Uh, I guess we've got we've got like, like some of the, the assignments like, like needs uh, Codio specific doc documentation. Yeah, exactly. And so okay. like, unfortunately, they've already. So the way Richard is doing things is he's going to um, offer a um, a workspace for every homework. Yeah, um, because I, I don't know, and 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 based on what we found out about them being specific units, um, for for as far as for grading purposes, it seems like maybe that's in line with what Codio is thinking. Yeah, who knows? So maybe yeah, we can we can check on Friday. Yeah. yeah. So, but then for Jay, for example, he wants to use the same workspace for the whole. Um, yeah. The whole thing, and now he's gonna ha- he's written up and gonna issue um, some. He sent uh, there to the group as well. He's gonna issue some instructions for the students to actually go there and and add a bit of configuration to that .dot codio file. That okay. will give them that preview button and tell them yeah. about the, the the command that they need to run to be able to to start the server. So that's okay. yeah, a bit of an oversight on, on my part. Um, I don't. I don't think it's, it's not an oversight on your part because you're not actually required to do it. Like everything that you're doing for them is kind of like on a goodwill basis on your part that you're like yeah. a friendly, happy person. So it's not an oversight. There's like, there's there's more that from the point of view of the people. Like from, I mean, there's a Berkeley course that they offer online, right? And so we are volunteering to help you know improve the documentation for their course. So that's yeah, an action item that we can you know something that might help us help others. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what the the, the 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 marketing meeting didn't generate any. That was that was a good chat, but uh, didn't generate. There's nothing. No, nobody's blocked on anything specifically, are they? I mean, you know, just the thing that I talked about yesterday. That it'd be it'd be nice to have materials that I can. Materials. Meet. Yeah. 
I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I I know that we're not going to be able to to you know get that completely up to where it will be. Hopefully, in the future, when um, well, the, the the best thing we could do like is like actually I could make a flyer today that you could print out. Yeah, that that would probably be the the. I mean, it, I guess it would probably just end up being like a a, a piece of paper that you can hand out. Um, yeah. I mean, unless you've got access to a double-sided printer, I don't know. Like, I guess that's the question: is like, what if any printing resources do you have? Yeah, I mean, I can go and get it um, printed. Um, I, I prefer to buy recycled paper, which they don't sure. have at the places. But um, yeah, I can, I can yeah. handle. It. Yeah, well, we can, we can maybe, you know, we can maybe try and take a part, take a pass through that. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got that there. As far as yeah, yeah as far as the the other marketing, I don't I don't know if I call them blockers, but um, yeah, Alex said he's keen to get started on the um helping out with the newsletter, but he needs access, and he said he's kind of uh, wants to talk to Federico. I I'm, I it wasn't clear to me whether he had tried. To, it didn't sound like he had tried to talk to Federico and it, and didn't get a hold of him. It just that he wants to talk to Federico and um, yeah. So well, probably some more. I think they did have like a session where yeah. Federico was like trying to. I mean, we have this. I think this bigger problem that basically elastic email is a bit of a land minefield in yep. terms of getting stuff done. Um, and maybe ultimately the way f forward will be getting into Mailjet and getting people using Mailjet because I think the interface is just hugely simpler. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, even though I mean, Alex is not coming from a technical, I think he's not so familiar with with computers necessarily. So so anyway, yep. we'll see. But yeah. Yep. All right. Um, so then I guess we've got faith thing and we've got, then there was this, the website one fire. Did you, um, I mean, if it's, if it, is it just working? Is it just need review, review? Should we, should I review that offline and get back to you? Do you think it's yeah, something it that be. we need to? Can be. Can we, right, so me review it offline and get back to you on it. Yep. Cool. So, well, yep. I think what, maybe the thing to do there is, well, yeah, uh, Faith, why don't you tell us, do you want to share your screen and tell us more about this problem that you're stuck on? So, it's, it's fixed. I've not just fixed it. Whoa! The amazing magic of scrums! <laughs> <laughs> and Faith's awesomeness, obviously. It's all, you know, we're basking in the reflected glory. But yeah, yeah cool, cool. But so what, I'm still, what, like what was I still the problem? Have, I still have questions. So it was yeah. this. Initially, this is what I had minus. You can see my screen. Yep. So I had, I had this, mm -hmm. and I'm still wondering why this wasn't working yet. Line three, like did uh -huh. what I wanted it to do. So why did I have to include the? So I've added two things. So I don't know what did the magic. I don't know if it's. Oh yeah. So I've had to add the. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not even sure what did the magic. It's either the apostrophe. But my like, why would why would it need this stars for it to work? I, I mean, thought by the virtue of writing front end and non modules, it should know that I am talking about everything in this folder. Am I making sense? Yeah, I mean, that's what I, yeah, it makes sense. I was going to say, Matt, do you have an idea about why one would work and not the other? Yeah, I mean, I, I it seems I, I, I kind of agree with um, Faith because when, when I'm thinking about doing things in Git Ignore, for example, I think that if you tell it to ignore a certain folder, that you're telling it to ignore everything inside that folder as well. I mean, I have an idea that these stars mean like all the folders and all the files inside the folders, and mm -hmm. but I, I'm not sure exactly why the other one would not work. I mean, you know, maybe maybe it thinks that node modules is a file. Um, oh. or I wonder if you put a um, I wonder if you put a um, forward slash after the node modules. Um, oh. so it would tell it that's a directory. If that would work. Okay, I'll try it. Uh, I feel like I haven't paired with you in a long time, Faith. Yeah. <laughs> I need to, we need to, more pairing sessions. <laughs> maybe maybe um, Sam will have like a long list of, of things that 
that he wants to comment about my pull request and we can pair on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, and we could even we could even look at it quickly now. I mean, I, I thought maybe we were going to end up spending some time on face, face thing, but if, if we're not all rushing off to do something else, we could easily look at that together. Um, and I think, Matt, your, your sort of intuitive assessment of that problem sounds correct to me. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's often what we think stuff should do, and then there's how people have coded it. Yeah. And so it, like, I mean, I'm just looking at uh, Stack Overflow things, which seem to indicate that in Rubicop, it's excludes stuff tends to expect to have wildcards indicating, you know, which things under folders should be excluded. Um, and there's, there's kind of, you know, it's, that's down to ultimately how the Rubicop people have coded Rubicop. So you can sort of say, oh, uh, it should be able to understand that I want everything under this folder to be doing that. And, and you could make an argument to the Rubicop people and you could like make a, an, open an issue saying, wouldn't this be more intuitive and there could be a discussion backwards and forwards and maybe it would lead to the, the project being changed. But yeah, certainly the things that I'm um, looking at in the, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at here, maybe I'll just share my screen. Um, this is the some of the Rubicop files here. Rubicop does a recursive file search. This is including excluding files. Um, starting from the directory it is run in, all directories given as command line of its files that match any pattern listed under all cops include an extensionless files with the hash bang declaration because any one of the known Ruby interpreters listed under all cops interpreters are inspected also unless the file also matches a pattern in all cops exclude. So uh, you see and then it's got the example here with the stars. And so I mean I think the key thing here is that this exclude is it's running like when it says pattern, it's sort of running a regular expression pattern mm. against the path to see if it matches that. And so um yeah, that, that then depends on exactly how the um, the pattern matching is done. Yep. Right. But so, so, Faith, were you finding there that just just the slash without the star 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 was working, so it, or was not was no, not working? It wasn't working. No. So I, I mean, I guess that's in the short term. It's like let's we just do want to rem remember that Rubicop exclusion and inclusion requires those um, wild cards. Okay. Um, and we could indeed open an issue with Rubicop and say, hey, wouldn't it be simpler if it just, um, you know, I mean, you could clearly write it such that anything that ended with a slash automatically had that appended to it under the hood and not require people to know that. And people might say, yeah, it's worth, that's a change that might make it easier for people or not worth making a change. Or So depending on how strongly you feel about it, but it's, it, that's, that's the whole thing with open source, right, is you can engage. You know, um, and we could even see maybe has somebody on GitHub. Yeah, uh, what they? maybe someone already has. <laughs> right, indeed. And then maybe a pull request in process. So GitHub, let's do, oh, what are we talking about? We're doing a Rubicop. And we go to the repo, which I can't, I guess it's this one. Yep, issues. And then we could do exclude and see lots of people mentioning exclude. Um, clearly lots of people chatting about different stuff. Can't immediately see one there. And then there's like, there's 187 closed, you know, and it could have been um, suggested before. And, it's, you know, someone said, no, we don't really need this. You can see here, like somebody's um, saying some patterns that they would like and not. So I mean, that, that's then a, kind of a job in itself to kind of like work through and read all the things that people are saying and have said about exclude. Um, if you were, you know, f feeling strongly, you could say, well, this is a big issue to me. This is, this is bad. This project should be this way. And you could say, I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to like, you know, YOLO. I don't know what that means, but like get the issue in there and, and potentially suffer the, the, you know, you know, have a little flame war about saying, no, you need this or not that or what have you. But, your, anyway. your idea doesn't make sense at all. Dude, come on. I had to waste yeah. like five minutes of my time. I'm never, getting, I'm never getting back. <laughs> like every other five minutes of my entire life, which I'll also never get back. I'll not get that back. That, that five back. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, well, I think it's funny. It's like, I, oh, that was two hours of my life. I'm never getting back. 
yeah, like all the other hours that you do get back? Like, yeah. how, how does that work? Uh, anyway. yeah. I think there's something about like how if My, it's uh, time go, sorry, time now, you, you can you can recuperate it, but if it's like yeah. wasted time, then you can never recuperate it. I'm just wondering if I'm like missing some coupons that were given out, that like yeah. the other stuff for my life, I could get back. Did, you, <laughs> did, did I miss that deal? That was, I don't know. Um, but so yeah, well, let's let's use this opportunity to quickly look at, yeah, so you've got this, and a little, I'm a little embarrassed to be honest. Like, not embarrassed. Yeah. I, I I just know that this is not a Ruby way of doing things, and I just I, for the life of me, I can't think. I can't. I ha, I, was, I looked at this. So I was I was quite tired by the time I actually sure these out, and I just like this whole like on line fifteen there, where I'm like i equals zero, and then like i plus right. one. That seems like it's not Ruby at all. Sure, and, sure. We can, and that's, but yeah, that's good stuff. That I'm, so, we'll, I mean, even I'm just going to like digest yeah, this. Yeah. So, so first off, we're, uh, so, so, so basically, yeah, at the moment, we just, like the original version, we just grab all of the content from the README as is. Yeah. If this content's now, right? So now we've got. If there's no pitch, by the way. Sorry. Right, 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 right. But so, so here we grab the content. And so now you're turning it into a, you're having Nohogiri parse it, and you're going through and looking for all of the places where it's got like a href. Yeah. And then you're going to uh, reject mm -hmm. all the ones where it includes HTTP mm -hmm. and where also or where it involves a, an anchor tag yeah where it starts with yeah right yeah and then you're going to pull out all of those values yep. which are um basically then that's a list of all of the relative links in the document yep. exactly and then you're going to go through for the relative links and you're going to say right these are actually what they should be given that we're going to be displaying this outside of github yep and then you're going to go back through the document and you're going to find all of the ahref tags, again, excluding those things. And then you're going to set the href to that absolute path. And yeah. Okay. And I've understood it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. That certainly seems like that should do the job. Yeah. I guess thinking about it, what I would be tempted to do. Um, and this, this is like, I think there might be a simpler way to do it, uh, but I might be wrong. Um, I look very silly, but I, I, I enjoy looking silly as my family will regularly attest. So that's all good. <laughs> um, but so I think what we could be doing is given that we've, assuming that we've got the projects readme, we could be doing this mm, no. and replacing it like, in place, um, if you can get the, 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 the syntax correct. So um, this might be tricky. But so what we're expecting is there's going to be something like this href, right? That, 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 that would be all of the links will have, they'll be like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I forget if I'll need to escape them correctly or what have you. And there's some like regular expression malarkey to do here. But so what we what we've kind of got is i mean almost like rather than me figuring out the r spec i could kind of wonder is there a regular expression to uh, match all the relative links in an html document and there we go somebody doing right that matches but bo both of these things somebody who wants both and I don't want both. I want just. But so, isn't it? Yeah, isn't all of the relative paths are going to be where the thing doesn't start with? Like that. This is an. This is well. Actually, the, the absolute paths will not work, will they? It's anything starting with. Um. I mean, will the anchor ones even? Work? I guess if they start with an anchor, it's fine. But so basically, we don't want anything that starts with like like th th this is going to be like the i mean about ftp or whatever but so we don't want anything that starts with 
kind of this chunk. Yeah, I guess with the um, with the anchors, what sensibly instead of just ignoring those and having those broken, it should maybe add the the link to the absolute path to the readme and add on the anchor. Well, to I, the think, I think the anchors will still work if they if they are just like at, if the actual beginning oh, yeah. of the yeah. yeah. I think I think that they will. It'll just stay work. on agile ventures. Yeah. So okay. I mean, my and then probably that. So like. Then we want to find like anything like this because should be a group match here where that can be kind of anything that's not a um, one of these star. I'm not sure if I'm doing that right, but so yeah, the idea here being that we yeah. we basically try and match you know relative paths only, and then oh, is that going to come out as so th then, then we're going to have to work, work like that. Then we want to put in here, like there's going to be, and I forget the syntax for this, but like we're going to want to match out the whichever version, like that one, two, three, it's probably, it still results in zero, the third group out of the regular expression. And then we also kind of want to have the thing put back in place there and that will need to be like slashed and that will be slashed. And then we want to prefix it with the thing that you've popped in there, which is this. So like that. And then potentially that would do it. Like if the regular expression was correct, but it's almost certainly not. And that would that would be an improvement because it's much shorter. Um, it would be shorter. And what, of course, we should we should be doing is like we should take. Uh, I've done this wrong. Look, look, take so what we should do. It, 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 what we've sort of done is we've taken the overall complexity. I mean, under the hood, it's still going to do what your thing is doing, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, but what we should do to make it more yeah. understandable is we should like uh, relative uh, paths uh, regular expression. Well, reg X. Yeah. There. And then so we can pop that in here. And yeah. So so ultimately we should get down to something where it's kind of saying there. And then th this even we could pull out, we could pull out yeah. this bit and we could say um we could do this, we could say this is um absolute path. Prefix. It's not actually going to be a um, uh, constant, is it? So absolute path prefix. Can you, can you explain why you're why you're adding what what the difference between the two of those are? Yeah. So the, the standard in Ruby is that if something is a constant that's never going to change, then we do it in all caps to indicate that that it's a constant. Yeah. But notice yeah. here with this one, we have a dynamic component in it. Yeah. So it would be unrubyish, and then there's actually this. I think there's certain things where um, it, things will be treated differently, or whatever. It's just not a good idea to make things that are not constants have this kind of capitalization scheme. Yeah. So um, you know, this could then be defined and pulled out into a utility file, but this is going to be like specific, you know, on in the process. So then we sort of pop that in here, it goes in there, and then we could even have like. Um, uh relative link um group uh, id equals three and then we could stick that in there and that has to have a dollar in front of it doesn't it i think Ooh, how would that even i think what is it do we just do we do we do dollar that would have to be this but there's a little bit that i am like so there's we can break it down into the separate problems. One is the problem of like, can we have a relative path reg apps? And that could be unit tested like separately by, you know, so like rather than trying to like hack at one long drawn out piece of code to just keep hacking at it until we think it works, we could like this could now go into a utilities area and we could write little unit tests that pass this thing and try and do like that basically give you a little something and do a G sub on it, right? 
And mm -hmm. so we can tune it to make sure that it works with each of the situations that we care about. Yep. And that this, the, that this link ID pulls out the correct thing. I, I, uh, maybe maybe we, uh, I, I might, we'd have to check like exactly, can I even do this in this context? I, I have a feeling that would just replace it with the string and we kind of want it to do the insertion of the, like the group from the regular expression. And I forget exactly how to do that. Um, but so some something like this would then we come down to an expression here, which is saying, okay, we're in the document, everything that matches the relative path, we're gonna replace it with absolute path prefix and the, you know, the relative link itself, uh, which then that that's uh, it, even with pulling those things out, it's still slightly shorter. And the kind of the narrative that I extracted from reading through the whole thing, I can potentially get in one line. Yeah. And yeah, you're you're making use of a really powerful um, Ruby method, which is cool. Uh, this below uh, will <laughs> probably not work as is, uh, but we maybe could try this approach. Um, yeah, and so, like, definitely, to, to, I mean, it was interesting you mentioned in your talk yesterday actually about you know um, agile just being sort of CDD and BDD. I, I can, and it's it's it's. Um, I mean, it's more than that. I think it's like, it's me, it's like, we try and adapt, <laughs> you know, because sometimes TDD and BDD kind of get in the way if we're learning. But like here, particularly with regular expressions, that's like, can really turn your head inside out. Like, so like a little unit test that would check that we get exactly the right kind of regular expression would be really handy. I mean, this is an interesting one that somebody's written one that matches both. And so almost, we could maybe put maybe like rather than I think I've got it the wrong way around. I think rather than excluding those, uh, maybe what we want is this one. I don't know. I think I've probably got it. You know, obviously, like like unit unit back, be back to. I, I think I've got this back to front. It's kind of it almost needs to be. We want to match the things that are not this. So I kind of almost need to put that in a. Is it, uh, what do I do with it? Do I put it in a square and say not or something? Yeah. Like that. It, it, I'm going to have it completely wrong. But And even rather than necessarily beating ourselves up to try and work out, we can probably find somewhere on the web someone who's got yeah. one that will work reasonably well. Yeah, I, I was looking as well, but then I, I decided to pay attention. But yeah, I, I, can, I can look for that. Cool. That sounds cool, like cool, a very cool. simple thing to do. All right. Yeah. Good awesome. stuff. So Thank you. I think that's after Scrum done. I've got lots of action items to get on with. Uh, I will not be in that TDD mob as usual. Uh, I'll see you for the, the local support meeting where yep. we'll, 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 we will plan yes. the sprint. Lots yes. of planning. Sprint planning. Awesome. Great. See you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Bye Matt. Bye, Faith. Thanks. Cheers.